Okay, so the voice chip on your Juno 106 is dying or crackling or has died. Uh, this is a very common problem on this synthesizer. If you own one of these, there's probably about an 80-90% chance that you're going to encounter this problem. So how do I know that it is dying? Well, let me put the headphones up to the camera because I don't have a external audio system. Play some keys here. Obviously this one is not working. So how do we figure out which chip has died? Well, I turn it off. Hold the key transpose while we turn it on. And this comes up. Now we're going to press poly 1 and 2. And when we look at the screen and press down, obviously chip number 1 is the one that's not working. So chip number one, that's the faulty chip. Okay, so now we're going to open the thing up. There's two screws on each side here. One, two, and then on the other side there. Just unscrew them and open this thing up. Just opens up just like that. Bunch of stuff inside. And here are the chips over here. Now let me get a pencil to point this out with. So here are the chips on the left hand side of the synthesizer. There's three groups of them. The chips are on the outside of each group. The one in the center is not a voice chip. The voice chips are, you know, it's clearly printed Roland 80017A on each side of that chip and that chip and obviously this one has had two replacements before <clears throat> I mean that stands out like a clear like a sore thumb that one and that one too chips are numbered one to six starting from the right going left so that's chip number one chip number two chip number three chip number four chip number five and chip number six so in my case, chip number one, this one right here, is the one that we're going to take out. So to do this, we're going to have to take this circuit board out. Looks like there's a Phillip head screw there, 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 there. Some connections that are going to have to be taken out. These connections. And I'm going to, and I highly recommend, taking a digital camera picture of this area before you get started so that you know exactly what it should look like when it goes back together okay so take the circuit board out of the 106 and this is what it looks like now I have screws in here because I like to do my soldering on a flat surface instead of on a you can use a uh, a vise and do it sideways but I like to do it flat so that's why I got those screws in there and you can do this just don't tighten these in too tight to the board uh, I took the chip out it used to be right here you can either desolder it out which is extremely difficult but since the chip is junk I just carefully you know this would be the other chip I just carefully wiggled it back and forth and it takes quite a while but eventually it'll snap off and it used to be right here now when I flipped this thing over to my surprise it had already been messed with not twice but four times and you can see it clearly because it's uh, got burn marks where it's been resoldered four times and there's pins sticking out of here so we need to desolder and pull those pins out Okay, so what do you need? Well, you need a solder. 
Um, I'm gonna need a a vacuum desolder. I'll show you how that works in a little while. Um, this is some 6040 resin core solder and some desoldering braid. And I really highly suggest that you take something out. This is an old circuit board out of a VCR and practice because it really helps. Um, just take some electronics, something that's junk out of the house and practice, practice until you feel comfortable. Okay, so take out the pins, just get a pair of needle nose pliers and your solder, and be very careful. It just pops right out. Okay, now that all the pins are out of the holes, we need to clean the holes out. We need to suck the rest of the solder out of the holes. And this is where I use the vacuum tool that I had earlier. Um, honestly, you could probably have just left the pins in there and use the vacuum tool and it would take the pins and all the solder out of the holes in one shot because you can wrap the pin around the hole in there and it's easy to just take it out in one shot. Now this is it's pretty difficult. You gotta be a quick shot. Okay, Roland does not produce does not make the voice chips for this. Uh, they haven't for many, many years. So what you got to do is go online and buy this chip. I posted the link in the video description. Um, this guy, his name is DNAB. He's the best out there for making these clones. They're they're very, very good. Um, this circuit board already has two of his clones, earlier generations of his clones, and voice three and six, I think. So there it is. I think it was. It comes from Belgium, and I think it was $70 to the door. So it's pretty much your only choice for a voice chip. Get one of these, they're really good. Okay, get all the solder out of the holes. Uh, put the replacement chip in. It's pretty obvious which way it should go in. Flip it around and solder it from the back. And to solder, just practice, practice, practice. It's not rocket science, but it takes a little bit of skill. Ouch. You gotta be careful not to burn yourself. <laughs> 